Well, there you go. That was certainly right for clicking around and playing with buttons. Good evening, everybody. Hope you are well, and I hope you can all hear me. So give us a thumbs up if you can hear me in the comments. Oh, there we go. Herps, if you turn the computer off as well, because I was hearing myself then. There we go. So good evening, everybody. Hope you are all well. Let's just have a look at who is here. Yes, we can hear you. Hi, Vince. Very good evening to you, Desmond Daunders. Hope you are well. Uh, the microphone's close to me, so you should be able to hear me quite well this evening. Latitude Adventures, good evening to you. I think your first time here. Anne Brooks is here as well. Young Taurus, very good evening to you, Young Taurus. We're going to be talking about you later on. Uh, Catherine, good evening to you. Full time touring. Crikey, there's some uh, familiar names here. And uh, I've just seen Steve Church. Oh, Churchwood just fly by there. I think he had something for me there. No, Churchman, sorry. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're all well. Greg Lewis, hello. Bob, hi, good evening to you. Sound check one, two with Make Way with the Morleys. Back of the room and everything. There we go. Um, is that a picture of Andrew in the background? I don't know. Where? Hmm. Oh dear. Yes, bless him. Right, let's try that again then. What happened there? The thing just went mad. It just went all weird. Uh, put 50p in the meter. Yes. Very strange. Uh, the app just literally crashed and then asked me if I'd like to resume. So I said, yes, why not? So sorry about that. Sorry for the brief interruption. Let's try and do that again. Unhitched. Yeah, the breakaway cable's attached, so we're okay. We're all good. Uh, so I hope you can hear me. I I can. I got a sixth sense of when it's going to fail because it starts to go very blocky here and then just dies off. I'm not really sure why that is. Anyway, there we go. Uh, we've got enough people here this evening, so let's make a start. Now you've probably worked out that I'm here alone. Um, oh yes, if it is still frozen, you can hear me. Hit refresh and hopefully you should see my ugly face once again. Um, so as you can make out and work out here, I'm on my own. There is uh, only me here this evening. The good lady herself has been doing an early shift this week and will continue to do earlies this week. Uh, so much so that she's in bed now uh, getting some very good sleeps. So as soon as I finish here, um, it's better if you don't refresh. Is that because um, what you, you see my beautiful face or not my beautiful face? Um, so uh, she won't be here this week. She won't be here next week either. Um, now, I alluded in the Twitter RT yesterday that this is the penultimate one um, from this season. Uh, and in fact, it is. This is the second to last one for those who don't understand what penultimate means. Caravan Gossip didn't understand what I meant when I said that to him earlier on. So, uh, yes, there we are. Uh, so this is the second to last one. Next week will be the last one. Uh, Muddy uh, Marvellous. If you hit refresh, try it that way. Uh, hopefully it should all come back up. Um, Rebecca, I need to ask you a question about Trudgefest. Ask away, Rebecca, and we'll see if we can help. If it's anything to do with the pub quiz... That's the ice cream truck just going by. Um, if it's anything to do with pub quiz, no, I'm not going to make it easy for you. I'm sorry. There we go. Right. So anyway, uh, last week, and it's not the Russians. No, we're in Wiltshire. You know, we don't make jokes about those things around here. Oh, good cup of coffee. Uh, very good evening to you, James. Very good evening to you, uh, um, uh, Mark. I hope you are well. I hope the X5 is fixed, by the way. So anyway, uh, um, last week, the radio uh, video. Did you see it? What did you think? I didn't find uh, Broadsword. I don't know where he uh, where he ended up, to be honest with you. He said he was in the woods next to the castle, but I couldn't find him. But uh, there we go. Would you believe it? That whole um, video took less than 20 minutes to film. Um, it, well, 20 minutes to film, 20 minutes to edit, simply because I was so short of time last week. But I really had, um, I really had such a, a lot on last week. I just thought to myself, I'm not going to be able to make anything for Friday. Um, so uh, I just put that together very quickly and you can probably work out I was in a bit of a mischievous mood at that point, hence the reason for the um, uh, the, 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 the uh, content. So, you know, it was pretty good, I thought. But uh, good laugh. Lots of people liked it. Uh, we'll go from there. Um, so, yeah, so last week was stupidly busy and I had a horrendous issue with Dropbox. I don't know if anybody else has ever suffered this, where it tried to keep syncing and wouldn't stop syncing and kept syncing. So much so I thought, I'll leave it alone. I'll get my second machine out and uh, just start doing work on that one. And then like a fool, I left 
Dropbox running and then it was filling up that machine as well. And so basically filled up two machines at the end and I had to delete uh, about four terabytes of data off my Dropbox at, at one point because it was trying to sync everywhere. It was an absolute nightmare. And it wasn't too bad, but unfortunately I had deadlines to meet and I missed those badly. So I'm a bit upset about that. Uh, my family and I want to come for the day on Saturday to church first. Uh, this is three person per person. No, it's per vehicle. Um, so Rebecca, it's per vehicle. Um, that's all it is. So get as many people as you can in, in and on around the vehicle. Um, a bit like looking like a, a train in Bangladesh, you know, where they literally hang onto the sides there. That'll be fantastic. Uh, too much sinking in your sunk. Never a truer word spoken, Steve. It was uh, horrendous. Yeah, it was four terabytes because it was actually trying to sync. I don't know why or how, but it was trying to sync all my video libraries that I have. And I've specifically got those folders set to do not sync. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was stupid. It was ridiculous. I don't know why it did it. It's getting blocky again. I think it might die. Whoa, please, please. Um, looks like a photo of a boiled egg on your shelf. What's that all about? Well, Ian was uh, promising photos of uh, an 8x6 of Andrew. And uh, seeing as I haven't got one, I thought, well, I'll make one myself. So I just printed off a screenshot of one of his videos. Bless him. Yes, I know I'm crashing badly. Thank you for that, Chloe. Go back to bed. Um, so anyway, so that was last week. So I've got some uh, village notices that I want to go through. Um, I've mentioned that this is the second to last Monday Night Live. The last one will be next week. Uh, Bob, hit refresh and I'll sync straight back up. Um, the couple of things I want to mention is some of the videos that I've created recently. One of them was the uh, tow bar on the car. And I alluded to the fact that you couldn't get a breakaway cable through it. And I had lots of information um, telling me that, yes, it should be for a shackle and the shackle needs to go through it. Now, I haven't updated the video and I will do a follow up video because I want to show what you should be doing when you have a brand new tow ball fitted. Um, but there is some type approvals on the shackle types that you need to have on these tow bars because some of them will just split apart. Some of them won't do the job. And so basically um, there is some type approvals and some guidelines that we should be paying attention to. So I'm going to update you fully with shackle types which can be attached to the mounting points of a tow bar. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one was from last week. I mentioned that there was some live, that the opportunity of the comments in the comments box to be um, in the uh, playback after the event. So all the comments you can actually see live. And unfortunately, for some very bizarre reason, it said playback, uh, live chat playback was not available. And for a God knows reason why. I don't know how or why I could switch that on. Reading through some of the comments online, it looked like it's a feature which YouTube are rolling out. So maybe it wasn't quite implemented at that point. So um, you never know. We'll see if it happens tonight. But don't shout at me if it's not working. But you never know. We might see what, what happens. Now, the big news this week is I put a blog post up on our website yesterday, day before, this weekend at least. Um, I put a blog post up on our site because I thought it was about time that we were able to mention to you the fact that we are now Van Gogh brand ambassadors. And being brand ambassadors means that um, we get a lot of Van Gogh equipment sent through to us. Um, we get pre-production models fired through to us. Um, and it's not just a case of a jolly of we get kit, we film it and then we keep it. It's not that at all. In fact, in rare cases, do we actually keep anything that Van Gogh will send through to us? Now, as you well know, we've already kitted out our awning with a lot of Van Gogh equipment already. And we love it, you know, but that's why we bought it, because we liked the way um, it looked and it felt. And so this partnership or marriage, I suppose, between us and Van Gogh seems really good. It seems to be working quite well. Um, and what will happen is that we'll get pre-production stuff sent through, we'll film it, we'll review it, we'll give our honest opinion on it and our honest thoughts on the products. And Van Gogh have been really, really um, brutally honest with us. They said, if you don't like it, don't try and sugarcoat it. Just tell us you don't like it and tell us how you think you could make it better. 
And I think what's going to happen between us and Van Gogh is going to be a beautiful thing. It means that basically we um, we are going to feed back information from you guys. So if you like something or you don't like something, we can feed that back. And because we've got a relationship straight with them, we can put that information straight back to um, Van Gogh directly and tell them that, hey, guys, this is not working or this is great. However, could you just do this? So it's a two way street. Um, and I'm really looking forward to working with them over the next uh, immediate future, over the next 12 months, for example. Um, now, Van Gogh have been very good and they've been very supportive um, of us. And they're going to supply us some um, large family tents, I think is what the best way to term it, uh, for Trudge Fest. So we've got some covered shelter. They're also going to supply us um, some bits and bobs as well for the goodie bags for everybody uh, comes in. Um, and uh, they, they've already said they're going to offer up uh, a few bits and bobs as well, hopefully for the auction at the end of the festival. So that's quite nice of them to do that. Now, as you may know, we had an air awning way back when we first started caravanning, and we were really let down with it. We did not enjoy it one bit, uh, because over time it sagged, it uh, warped, and I became quite unimpressed with air awnings. So Van Gogh know this, and they know they've got an uphill struggle with me because they know that I'm not particularly a fan of them. As you well know, we've got a roll away awning at the moment. So they've got to go some in order to impress me in terms of um, awnings and air awnings going forward. But from what I've seen and some of the things that the, uh, that the they've been discussing, some of the concepts, I, I'm quite looking forward to it. Uh, do you have an awning sleeping tent? Uh, if so, can you make a video about it looking to get one? Richard, what we did, um, we had a sleeping, um, when Tom used to come with us in the caravan, what we would do is we would have um, an internal um, sleeping room. And I think it was just a generic one that we bought, in fact. I can't remember who or what make it was. And then we just put a bed in that. We hung that from the rails inside the awning. Um, now, there are specific sleeping pods for specific um, awnings. Camper make one for their awnings. And on the new awnings which Van Gogh make, and they've got zip up sleeping pods which go on the outside of the awning. So you don't lose any of the internal space. It is something that I want to be covering off because there is a possibility if some of Chloe's friends want to come away with us when we go camping. So for that reason, I want to be able to put a sleeping pod in the awning. We don't lose any space in the awning and Chloe can have her friends over. So I'm going to cover that off as well. And in fact, there's a few very small details I want to share with the awnings that uh, we, we're looking to, to share with you. So, um, you know, and I'm going to go through some of those points. So, you know, over the next over the summertime, it looks as if we're going to be quite busy and I'm looking forward to sharing some of those things with you. So uh, let's have a look at some of the comments here. Um, Ashley has written, I changed my awning to an air one and I wished I hadn't the same problem as Dan. So I'm going back to the original one. Yeah, you see, that's the, pro the problem that we suffered with our awning is they sagged. And when they sagged and when it rains, it means it stretches. And, you know, it, it, it for me, it was a problem and it ruined the awning, to be honest with you. So I wasn't a very happy person about that because let's be honest about it. An awning is an awful lot of money. So I was not impressed. So that's why we went for this um, roll away awning, which for us so far has been absolutely brilliant. The problem with it is it takes a few more minutes to put up than the air awning counterparts. But my argument to it is, well, you've still got to peg it out. And to be absolutely honest with you, pegging out an awning is probably still the most horrendous task you've got to do and probably takes the most time. Uh, just bought an awning in a tent for our awning for a child and friend, better outside caravan. Absolutely. Um, Bob Earnshaw, our air awning exploded. Wish you'd filmed it. Oh, crikey. Uh, silicon spray is your friend when, yeah, when it comes to awning rails. Yeah, absolutely. Dave Park Ness, well done. Uh, silicon spray in the awning rail, make it nice and uh, lubricated. Uh, there is a double entendre for innuendos when it comes to lubricating your awning rail. So that's the whole Van Gogh thing. Um, I'm quite excited about it. I hope you are too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of things we want to cover off. So I think it's going to be a good thing. And they're going to send through lots of different awnings for different occasions, different, you know, events, etc., different size caravans. So we're going to have an opportunity to just go through them. And if we like them, then we'll buy them. 
you know, and, if, and it's as simple as that. Um, you know, we're not given anything here for free. We're literally given stuff to review, tell people what we think, let Rango know what we think and send it straight back to them. So, you know, and if we like it, then we'll, we'll buy it from them. But they've got an uphill struggle with me in air warnings. Um, are you struggling with pegs? Try getting used to carting types and uh, filling concrete. That's a thing I'm going to cover off as well. I'm going to do it with Swindon Caravan Group, in fact, is we're going to do the great peg review. Because as I'm sure you're aware, there is a vast array of pegs available on the market now. And I'm going to go through um, all the pegs that are for sale up at the Swindon Caravan Group in the accessory shop. Uh, I'm going to take Lee and we're going to go outside and we're going to try out the pegs and see if they're any good for the different soil types. So stay tuned for that one. That will be coming out in a few weeks' time. Um... Trudge Fest is now closed. If you wanted to book a pitch, you cannot. It's now done. So if you've booked, thank you. Um, we've got lots of things lined up for those people. We've got a private Facebook group for the people who have booked up. And I am... Um, what's that? Are you okay for gin, Dan? Oh, thank you, Mark. I am. Um, what does Angela like to drink? Tanqueray is what she likes to drink. A lot of it. Bless her. Um, so uh, we've got a private group for everybody who's coming to Trudge Fest. They're all signed up to that. And we're communicating in there and there's lots of good things booked we are already thinking about next year and i'm talking to some of the other people on the live chat tonight like the blue spanners um i'm talking to them already about what we can do for next year and make it better learning a lot already this year um and uh, yes we'll go from there oliver how is the storage center going oliver you'll see an update to that in two weeks time on the storage um yard um and uh, and what's actually happening there so stay tuned for that one i will let nothing out of the bag just yet uh thanks dan i've just sold my awning and bought a camper or air uh, oh well <laughs> oh well colin <laughs> lots of people um lots of people like uh, camper air awnings i'll be honest with you we didn't get on with it um it sagged and and it was awful it was a terrible just terrible thing um but there we go uh, monkey 47 gin yes it's here somewhere yes favorite gin at the moment and thank you very much for mark hill for sending through the bottle of this stuff it was amazing thank you um we do have a wonderful array of prizes being offered up for trudge fest um pitch perfect uh this week last week stepped up to the uh, the call and he's offered a couple of his leveling devices to fit onto caravans um to show how you know how unlevel your caravan is um auto leveling devices etc he's offered up a couple of those products that they sell and make um for the auction that we're going to run for um the stroke association we do have in the moment an amazing array of stuff that we're going to auction off i'm not sure that we're going to just limit it to trudge fest participants i think we may open it up to be online so I'm going to think about that. So if you've got any ideas on how we can do that to include everybody and raise as much cash as we possibly can for the Stroke Association and certainly for Lynn and Rich, put comments in the in the below. Don't put it in the live chat. Put it in the live comments of the video once this one has finished rendering. So, uh, so that's it. So that's our village notices. Now then, let's have a look at some of the comments. Um, I've been approached by a company to review them. Any tips? Oh, what's that? Sorry, what's that? Uh, Ball Family Adventures. Hi, Dan. I've been approached by a company for a review. Any tips? Um, yeah, if you, need, if you are ever approached to do a review of everything, uh, film the unboxing, show what you get in the box, show what your thoughts are, explain what it's for, film or take pictures of you fitting it or playing around with it, and then just give your honest feedback and uh, and then upload it. I've always run a principle of if it's no good, if I don't like it, and if it's something I wouldn't buy myself, then I never release that video. I've always come to the opinion that there's literally no point in putting a less than complimentary or a less than truthful or you know honest opinion about anything. And if you think that it's rubbish, but you still feel a bit embarrassed about having it, then just send it straight back and just say, I don't think this is for us. I've done it countless times. We do get stuff sent to us all the time. I look at it, I play with it. I think to myself, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't spend any money on this. And I send it back and I say, it's not for us. Thank you. And you know what? People have come back to us and said, why didn't you like it? 
And then I tell them why I think it's not for us and why it's poor or what have you. And from that, you know, it goes on to better things. So uh, just be honest and just film everything and see what you think. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, bought a Vango Kalahari 420. Apart from the van, it's the best thing we have bought. Fantastic, Steve. Um, we do have, by the way, in the future, we do have other brand um, ambassador roles, I suppose. Yeah, we do have other things that I'm going to be announcing with you. You've probably guessed who they are and what they are, but we've been working really hard with them to produce some great content. And that'll be stuff which doesn't appear necessarily on this channel, but will appear on other channels. So, you know, um, keep an eye out for those. But we do have lots coming this year for them. Is that a picture of Andrew Dutton behind you? No, it's not Andrew Dutton. It's Andrew Ditton. Uh, I like that, actually. I like that. I might change that around now for, ev for every week for somebody else. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Uh, only 34 likes. Well, there we go. So anyway, so let's share some love around this evening. Now, today I wanted to... Um, I wanted to talk to you about CLs actually because I've got a I've got something that I'm doing in the few weeks and I just wanted your opinion on CL sites but um, I think it's appropriate to talk about two um, well first of all let's talk about a YouTube channel which has just been ups ups loaded upstaged no uh, created has been created very recently and if you have been to the Caravan and Motorhome show or the motorhome camping motorhome caravan show motorhome or if you've ever watched eastenders or the background of any um soap opera you will probably be aware of ryan philpot and if you're on twitter you're probably aware of the overnighters and it's a couple who are um have a motorhome and they you know do whatever people do in motorhomes and they've just set up a fantastic new youtube channel and Ryan is a really, really funny guy. Um, he's an actor. Um, some say a variable question, uh, questionable uh, talents. Uh, but he's also the compare at the Caravan and Motorhome Show um, and the Motorhome Camping Caravanning Motorhome Show and the Static Caravanning Motorhome Show. Yeah, all of that. Um, he's the compare on stage and he's the guy that conducts a lot of the interviews. Top, top um, chap. Strange comments there. Um, top chap, lovely guy, and Ian should be putting up a link to the um, the channel. Now the idea is this: I want you to go and have a look at his content. I want you to go and have a look at the few videos that he's gone on there. And when I last checked, he had three subscribers. Three subscribers. I would like you to um, go and subscribe to him as much as you possibly can. Go and give for the love to him because I know that Ryan has got some great ideas and for now, uh, Ryan's got some great ideas on um, content that he wants to push out. I had a really lovely chat with him at the NEC about how to do it, some technicalities, vlogging, etc. But he wants to share the motorhome life with you. Now, strictly speaking, it's not caravan related, I know, but you know, we're distant cousins, aren't we? The caravanners and the motorhomes. So it's only right that we share the love to Ryan and, uh, and his good lady. And, and the, you know, and it's a really worthwhile um, channel to go and have a look at. There was one video on there where he was in the snow just a couple of weeks ago on the way to the gym. Honestly, hilarious. Worthwhile to go and watch that. It's hilarious. Um, so let's have a look at some of the comments. I see weird comments coming up here. What's going on? Am I not privy to something? Um, stayed at Durham for two weeks for CL. Yeah, we're going to all look at that. See, there's lots of CL and... Um, <laughs> what Andrew Ditton has done across this channel. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yes, I'm aware. Um, apparently, the um, yeah, the, the link to the young Atoras, which I'll come on to in a moment, is broken. So please, you know, don't, don't, don't go on to that. The Accidental Caravan. Pardon my ignorance, what does CL stand for? CL, Ian, stands for Certified Location. Um, if that's for the Caravan and Motorhome Club, if you were a member of the Camping and Car Camping and Caravan Club, it would be known as a CS, which is a certified site. And basically what they are, they're small independent sites 
run by local people. The maximum of five um, maximum of five caravans or five units and they um they are run locally by you know the landowner they're affiliated to the clubs um so there's the two national clubs and uh, and they're a very enjoyable way of being able to um stay away for instance for for not so much money um, now i was going to talk about them in further detail but in actual fact i think i'm going to do that next week um because there's a lot of things i want to go through with them so uh yeah, so that's what a CL stroke CS actually is. Um, Oliver Cox, Caravan Guard, how's it going? Caravan Guard is going very well. I hope you've seen lots of content on their channel. Um, you've noticed that I've been adding a lot of content with them and working really hard with Caravan Guard to produce some great content on their channels. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's going really well. Got a few more videos which I'm just finishing off for them this week, um, and they'll be. They'll be released in the next couple of months, um, but there's a lot more to come throughout the year. So that's that's good things. It's a lot of work, though. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, so, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about CLs tonight. I think we'll do that next week because I want to dedicate a whole um, host of time to it. So I've spoken about Ryan um, and I've spoken about the Overnighters worthwhile uh, channel. Please go and subscribe to them. Look at that. 15 now. That will annoy him. I suspect he left the notification switched on as well so that he'll be getting constant notifications of people subscribing to him. Let's see if we can get him to 100, shall we? That'd be great. Um, now, another one, which they haven't got a YouTube channel yet, but they are all over um, social media. They've started up very recently on Twitter. They've got a Facebook page, I think, um, and they've just started on Instagram. Um, and it is the Young I did write it down here a minute. Where is it? The Young Taurus. Silly Billy. Um, it is the Young Taurus. And the concept is really, I think, very refreshing. It's two young couples in their mid-20s. We've got some beautiful caravans, lovely cars, and they just want to share their experiences of caravanning, touring with the younger audience. Now, anybody who does create... Um, content on YouTube will no doubt be looking at their demographics and realise that their demographics are anyone aged 40 upwards. That's where the bulk of our um, audience is actually sat. And there's very, very low numbers of people in their 20s or in their 30s who hitch up and head off for the weekend, which is incredibly sad, isn't it? Because you think to yourself, all the young families that of the yesteryear, way back in the 70s and the 80s, that's how my dad, my mum used to do it. You know, we used to be a young family back then. And, uh, you know, we used to head off and, and spend loads of time. And it was young families. But that just doesn't seem to be so popular these days. It seems to be an older generation, I suppose, from the generation that was back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. So they're coming at it from a really fresh and really um, positive angle. That They're young tourists. They've got some wonderful equipment and they really do enjoy um touring with their caravans and what they're really passionate about is sharing their stories sharing their experiences with the younger audience so go and have a look at them now they've put a tweet out today on twitter asking for stories and for uh, feedback and information to them on um stories of from you guys way back from your youth so once Ian has figured out what's going on with the uh, links themselves, because Google's link shortener seems to be playing silly sausages tonight. Um, and uh, as soon as um, he's figured out what's going on there, he's going to put a link to them. Go to that uh, link. And there's an email address that they've put on the front page. And they, uh, they're they literally asking for stories on your young experiences with caravanning. And they're trying to build this wonderful library of um, of everything together. And I think that'd be lovely for you to go and experience with it. If you're on Instagram, go and follow them. If you're on Twitter, go and follow them. Um, and they're, they're quite new to it all. So let's welcome them with, with open arms onto the online environment. And you never know, one day they might be producing content on YouTube as well, which would be lovely, won't it? Um, because there's not enough people still producing content on YouTube on their caravanning adventures. As much as it's growing up quickly and blooming into something bigger than you could ever possibly imagine. We still need to um, encourage more people to produce more content. 
Hello, have you spoken about why you've moved storage facility yet? Johnny, there'll be a video on that in a couple of weeks. Don't worry, I'm not going to say anything yet. You'll find out. Um, uh, to be young, work hard, pay off a student loan and try and deposit together. It's hard to be young. Yes, it is hard to be young. Uh, I'm only 41, my husband is 52, and my kids are 18, 15, 11, and we love caravanning. I suspect, Rebecca, that's why you drink, isn't it? Uh, I'm surprised more central youth committees are not hitting out YouTube and other social media. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, there's a link to my Twitter. My last video, that's from Park Ness. Uh, go and give him a follow if you're on Twitter. Um, my day... In my day, if you followed someone, you got reported. Well, it depends if you're evasive manoeuvres, isn't it? Uh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, so there we are. There's some lovely comments coming through here already. Um, so that's it from me this evening. So let's go through it. If you've got questions, start putting them in now um, and we'll start going through them. Uh, the, the, this comment will be gone before Dan sees it. There we go, Richard. I've read it out for you. Hey, hey. I'm paying for my son's deposit. Yes. Well, I uh, just got back from Wales to have a bunch to edit and put together. Well done, my big toe. Lovely. Um, isn't Andy Morley only 25? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andy Morley is a is a sole distribution or point of Grecian 2000, I understand. Um, first, caravan, first caravan adventure of the year done this weekend. Merlin Pass Holder event, caravan sighted in Alderstead. Awesome. Alderstead, yes. Uh, do you think there's been a surge in caravanning popularity now, a shortage of pitches available? I you even need more campsites. What do you think? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I must be honest with you, Gordon. I think I have seen a surge in popularity in caravanning over the winter months when we first started and believe me we haven't been going long when we first started um we noticed that there was a lot of pitches a lot of empty pitches and you know we thought well this is lovely because it's nice and quiet and recently when we went away again you know in the last winter you know really quiet times we noticed how busy it was um when we booked into morton on the marsh last year year before um, during the February half term, the site was fully packed. You, you, you know, it was literally had no um, no availability. So I have seen a massive spike in the popularity of caravanning or motorhoming during the winter months. What I must say is during the winter months, the popularity seems to be around motorhomes. Um, I seems It seems to be that caravans are not so popular, but motorhomes definitely um, so that's what I've seen anyway. What about you guys? Have you seen the popularity spike recently? Uh, it's busy because the majority of sites are not open. I don't know about that, Robert, to be honest with you. Um, there are sites, obviously, which close, but I think um, it's the same number that always has been. Um, uh, the accidental caravan will have to upload after Easter when the first race meet at Santa Pod. Oh, Santa Pod's just had new tarmac put down, hasn't it? Uh, Oliver, no, it has not been fixed yet. Um, there'll be a story on that later. Um, sorry, I've only just got here. Hi, Jan. I hope you're well. Um, hearing people saying they can't get anywhere booked for Easter already. Blimey. I must admit, when we booked up for Easter, we had no problems. And it's quite a busy site that we're booked onto. So that was, you know, and there was no problems at all booking on there. Uh, Dan, single axle or twin axle? <laughs> if you can do it and you really want the space, go for a twin axle. Um, twin axles obviously tow a lot better. They're you know they're a lot more um, stable. Um, but I think to be honest with you, with the design and the improvements in um, stability and chassis development, um, a single axle nowadays tows as well as a twin axle from. 20 30 years ago so you know it's dealer's choice if you only need a single axle just have a single axle i mean Andrew and i were looking at caravan just this weekend and uh, we decided that that would probably be our, be our next caravan 
um, and uh, it was still only a single axle and in fact is smaller than the one we have at the moment. Uh, there we go, we've got other people saying there. Um, single axle, far more manoeuvrable. Twin axle all the way. Um, I still don't understand why the Camping Motorhome Club aren't open early in the year. Uh, they're most in, well, um, some sites do remain open all year round um, with the Caravan and Motorhome Club. Um, some of them obviously close for a short time whilst maintenance is taking place. Um, but there are some sites which do stay open all year round. Um, absolutely. There we go. There's uh, legs down there. Lots of camp clubs, Opal, all the camp clubs open all year. Absolutely. Places places that are in cities, for example, that open all year round. Uh, Longleat, I believe, is open all year round. Sirencester uh, closes for just six weeks, but that's in the off season anyway. Um, and there's at least 50 CM seats open all year round. Um we have a single axle. We think it's easier than twin. See that debate could go on for ages and ages. There we go. There, yes, all very good. So uh, yeah. So is there any more questions then? Oh, any more plans to take the caravan abroad, Richard? Not this year. Um, simply because we're too busy. Um, we do have a a big project um, that we are signed up to in July and August. Um, you will know about that more when the time comes, but we do have that and that's going to take quite a lot um, from us. Um, so it's no, we're probably not going to go away this year. We might do it next year, though. And I'm thinking instead of going down into France, I'm thinking of taking um, Angela to Holland because um, she's always wanted to go back to uh, to Holland and to her Dutch roots and, uh, and I think I'd like to take her across there and apparently it's very easy to get across there so I might be doing that so we'll have a go. Uh, Nick Bartlett, hi Dan, love the channel, bought the first caravan when 30, now five years on, just bought a brand new one, two comments gone, uh, where's it gone? And the family love it, that's fantastic, well done Nick, that's great news. Um, when is your next family trip video? They're the best after the walkie talkie one. Um, we are going to be in Easter. I am going to be filming bits of it, but I will be honest with you. I am seriously considering not filming it because I actually just need a holiday. I actually just need a break. Um, and I don't want the caravan to become a workplace. Um, and I don't want it to become a a place that I'm always working and I'm always doing things. I'm always filming, for instance, uh, because very quickly the filming has now gone from a recreational fun time thing to a very hectic um, work thing. So it's, you know, it's starting to swing. So I think to myself, OK, I might just film Easter, but I am seriously thinking about not doing a lot of it. So, you know, we'll, we'll see about that one. Uh, Caravan security video. Oliver, there is one of those coming out in the near future. I'm just waiting for some bits from various manufacturers and I can show you what's available in the market and some of the things that you can be doing with security. So, yes, that is um, coming up. Uh, been to Holland twice. Uh, let Chloe film it. Viewpoint of a child. Always fun. Absolutely. She's pretty good at the filming, especially of herself and her chin. Uh, Dan, you look like you're back in the rat race. It does a bit, doesn't it? Uh, we would like to go to France in the summer. I'm nervous but excited. I tell you what, Rebecca, head on over to Andy Morley's channel. He's got some top tips on travelling to France. And I know that listening and watching his live in the week, last week, uh, they were saying that they're going back to France. So head on over to his channel and he's got top tips about driving in France. So, yes, very good. Uh, we would not mind at all if you didn't clod your vlog. I clod. Uh, on your holiday after what is a holiday have a great time Dan. thank you mark that's very kind of you um yeah take a holiday does angela ever tow darren she will be um she will be towing soon um because we're not using the x5 because we're using my car to tow um i'm not sure how that will go down because angela likes her x5 you know where she's up high and she can see all around her because the x5 is angela's car not mine um so uh, yeah we'll see we'll see it uh, how it goes down uh, take it easy down, slow down a little. I wish I could. Everybody wants a bit of me at the moment, Muddy Marvellous. Uh, it's been ridiculous over the last week. Uh, yes, have a holiday. Well, we'll see how that goes. Right then, guys, I think that's it from me this evening. If you've got any comments um, 
uh, or questions for next week, the last one that we're going to talk about, um, put them down in the comments down here. And uh, yes, there we go. I hope that's uh, I've been. I hope that's been all right for you this evening. Uh, I'm going to finish this coffee, which is now stone cold, and then uh, make sure the missus is all right. So thanks very much for tuning in tonight, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you again next week. Bye now.